naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Everybody to <clears throat> my live stream here on Facebook, Iggy Garcia Live. Uh, today we're going to have a interesting topic today, which is kind of cool. It's kind of fun. Today's episode 148, and today we're going to be talking about the altar. Do you have an altar? Do you have something that you can look at? Something that you can, uh, you know, set things and pray. But that's what we're going to begin with. But I want to start off by lighting a candle here we do every show give thanks to our ancestors give thanks to everybody who has trailblazed the path for us those who have worked hard to get us to where we are today as we are trailblazing the past and as we are preparing ourselves in doing the things we need to do to move um, our ancestors you know from the past into the future to us to the present moment and then one day we become the ancestors, so we light this candle that will burn during our show. And this is a sacred temple, sacred place. And like we do every show, this is one of my sage sticks. We light it just to kind of set the tone, set the mood. Move some of that energy. Some of that stuff is just kind of stuck with us a little bit. I like this because it doesn't burn crazy. like this stuff. It smells like tea. All right, so I want to say hi to everybody. I'd like to let everybody know this show is brought to you by Serenity Salt Spa, 5951 South Sunbury Road in Westerville, Ohio. I'm a co-owner of the spa, and so I want to give everybody the opportunity to visit the spa and you can check out our website at Serenity saltspa.com I went slow enough for you guys to write that down serenity saltspa.com if you go online you can actually book the times there and if you use the code Iggy you'll get a discount so for those of you who've never been to a salt room and want to be part of the salt room experience um, when you schedule online for the appropriate times that you have there the schedule will help you out and just type in code Iggy and you will get a su secret surprise but I won't tell you what the surprise is. That's something you have to figure out when you get online and when you book an appointment at SerenitySaltSpa.com. And again, we're at 5951 South Sunbury Road in Westerville, Ohio. If you've not been there, it's an amazing experience. It's good for your skin, good for your body, good for your, your lungs, your, your sinus cavities, anything that has to do with asthma or anything under that uh, kind of premise, it'll help you. So if you can make it to the Serenity Salt Spa, I hope to see you there because I'll be there and I'll be checking you in and I'm your tour guide. So if you've not had a salt spa experience, today's show is brought to you by Serenity Salt Spa. All right. So let's continue with the show. All right. So I hope everybody's doing okay. And I know that there's been a lot of things going on in everybody's lives. Uh, we're trying to get back into the rhythm <clears throat> of our lives, trying to get back into the rhythm of what... Uh, <clears throat> your new path is what your new uh, direction is and what that looks like to you and so uh for a lot of people it's it's been an easy transition and for a lot of people it's not been easy to transition regardless regardless of what's happening though is when we're moving into this space of nuances things that we're not familiar with things that are different and um 
you know, it could be a very scary time. It could be very challenging for some people. And so hopefully you were able to, you know, start to get a little grasp of uh, something better for yourself. Uh, there, you know, there's been a lot of tragedies. There's been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of change. There's been just the sheer fact of, of this pandemic happening has caused uh, shifts in everybody's lives to live differently, to approach life differently, to do things differently, to to be daring, to be not daring, to be locked up, to not be locked up, to do things that we're not accustomed to or to do things that we're just not used to or to create new things and do new things that we've not done before. So it gives you a lot of opportunities to do things. So your old path is probably no more. And even my path that I used to walk has drastically changed and is completely different than what it was before. And rightfully so. That happens in life, period. But when the certain circumstances come out and certain things happen in life, they seem to put us into these, this frame of mind of, of doubting and a frame of mind of not understanding and not feeling certain things. A lot of us are in different categories and different groups on how we feel about you know, you know know what has happened. Some of us have taken the vaccine. Some of us have not taken the vaccine. And I'm not here to judge. And we shouldn't really judge. We should just be understanding that people have uh, their decisions and choices they want to make for their lives, regardless of what the situation is. You know, there's sometimes people make decisions that you won't like. And then sometimes they'll make, they'll make decisions that you're going to love. But isn't that life? Isn't that the way it is? Of course it is. So how do you find some type of grounding mechanism in this life how do you find something that will get you uh, going get you back on track first of all you have to wade through all the crap that you're in you have to you have to muddle through it fight through it and just kind of go through it because that's where you're at that's what's happening and that's what's going on and you can't help it but feel that way and you can't help but feel the 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 thickness that is is among us but even in that thickness eventually that breaks away and that falls away and then you start to see light you know you know, we, we should be grateful for things that we see every day, right? The sun's out. We wake up. We're here. We're breathing. We're living. We're engaging. And, you know, for some people that's enough. And for some people not. But grieving and losing and loss of uh, loved ones is also uh, changes the game a bit. Changes the game in the sense of how you understand it and how you will approach it. The way you were probably going, you know, when things were feeling pretty good. And all of a sudden you have this loss. And this loss is detrimental by no means and yeah, I can't even justify to even give it proper words but to lose family members to lose loved ones uh, significant others is is hard I'm not gonna you know pretend like I know because I have had loss many of you have had losses some of you have been fortunate not to have losses in those categories in those type of ways but regardless it does change you it does start to affect you differently. You start to see life much differently. You start to approach things from a different vantage point. You start to realize <clears throat> excuse me, how short life is and, and how fast and quickly it can just change in a blink of an eye. Every day, you know, people leave this planet and every day someone's born on this planet. So the transitions are happening constantly. So it's, and it's going to be one day our turn to take those steps into the directions of transitioning off this planet. But if we're not there now, it shouldn't be a really a big factor in this moment, except for we'd never know when our next breath going to be. We don't know when our final breath will be. And so we shall <clears throat> not saying that we have to live life to extent until its fullest and, you know, and, and, you know, give you that, you know, that cheerleader or, or that, you know, that pump uh, motivational talk. Sometimes you have to be in your feelings. Sometimes you have to feel it. And you have to ask for help. I'm a, I'm a true, firm believer that we should ask for help when we're in those places, when we're in those moments where we're not feeling and we're not understanding what we're feeling and what the emotions are riding through our body and what's happening. Because sometimes we don't even understand what's going on. The only thing we know is what we're feeling in that moment. And sometimes that moment feels so real that we can't distinguish you know, the difference. And we get lost in our mind because our mind is very powerful. It can do a lot of crazy things. It can do a lot of beautiful things. It can put us in places and situations where we were not even aware of. But regardless, 
you know, you're going to walk different paths throughout your life. Your whole life is going to be about different paths and how you choose to walk those paths and who you want to walk those paths with, who you want to break away from, who you want to invite into your on your journey. Because that's what we do as humans. We, we invite people in and we invite people out. And sometimes we kick them out and sometimes we... <laughs> Sometimes we love them and sometimes we are in disagreement and we're not in in alignment with them. But anyhow, but what I wanted to talk to you about today a little bit was that. But I also want to talk about how do we how do we get into a place where we can create a routine which will help us to see or to give us a direction and to give us purpose. In many Native American and shamanic traditions and different uh uh, ways of beliefs and in religions they create these things called temples or little altars or little places of uh, you know acknowledgement where you place things that are valuable to you things that are important to you it could be a cross it could be a star it could be a rock it could be pictures but the thing about it is creating a little altar for yourself what is an altar an altar is whatever you want it to be but for those who don't know what an altar is basically what it is is you you create all the favorite things that you like. And you're not really worshiping these things, but you're acknowledging the things that have happened in your life and you put the pieces and parts. You know, like this little turtle, you know. You take this turtle and Mother Earth, you put it in there. You put it in your altar. You have a feather. You lay it down in your altar. It really depends what you want to put in your altar because it's as unique as you are. It's what you bring to, what you bring to your world. Because remember, we're here, we're dealing with your world, what your world needs and what your world's looking for. Because it's easy to emulate and to do what other people do. But for many people, I've, I've learned very quickly and very fast that a lot of people don't do things not because they don't want to. They don't do a lot of things because they don't know how to or understand how to or never been taught to. You know, for, there are people on this um, podcast who probably have never had an altar, never had a place that they could do sacred, their, their sacred work or their sacred prayers, their sacred, you know, offerings to the universe, to their God, to, you know, their family, to their friends. Acknowledgement. I have an altar over here on the other side of my room where I have pictures of all the people who have, who have, uh, who are sick or who are deceased. And those pictures, number one is I light a candle every Monday because this is a tradition that has been taught to me f by my family you know to honor the the deceased and honor our ancestors give thanks to them and help them to move and transition in their path as they move through the different steps and different layers of this journey that we don't know some people call it purgatory and some people call it you know the in between you know and we help them and we help their souls move forward our work's not done when we when we die we we are evolving into a different version of ourselves it's like the caterpillar when it becomes a butterfly does it remember it was a caterpillar i probably would have to say probably not it probably doesn't remember does it see a caterpillar and does it wonder uh, who knows maybe that's the same way when we transition that we move into this new space that we don't even recognize because it's different and there's no point of reference for it and i believe that's what happens with human beings i believe the humans we're the same way. This is, even though it's a living, moving temple, moving body, I believe it's also a cocoon. It's also a preparation for us to move into the next phases of our lives. The only reason I say that is because the body breaks down and ages, and it starts to change. It starts to have its own metamorphosis. It doesn't look anything like it used to when it first started. And as it grows and as, as it continues, we begin to move into these phases. I remember when my father transitioned, he'd look like nothing that I remember him in all the stages of my life. But I knew that my dad wasn't there when he left his body, when my sister and I were there holding his hand. And that 2.35 in the, in the morning, you know, and when we said goodbye, our final goodbye to him. But I knew that it wasn't over because I felt this wind come through the door. The door just kind of opened up a little bit and I felt this wrapping, this, this, this wrapping around my body. That's the best way I can describe it. It's like something wrapped around my body. And just kind of went to him and helped him move into his transition. Or maybe it was him, you know, wrapping around and saying goodbye and moving to where they go. 
And so, you know, we just don't know what it is. These are the mysteries of life, so we'll never know. But, you know, the mysteries of life, are the, that's why they're called mysteries. But there's so much beauty in, in life itself, in the present moment, and these things that we call life, these things that are, we're in right now. You know, sometimes we get fixated into wanting to move into the next phases of our life, move into this place. But, you know, we have a lot of stuff around us and we have a lot of stimulation, a lot of things that, that move us and, and confuse us and, and sidetrack us and, and put us on these things. So basically what your, your altar is a place where you can ground, where you can just meditate, where you can just give offerings and give thanks of gratitude, where you can light candles or put oils or you can put... You know, essential oils on you or perfumes or water or depend you know everybody's 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 altar is different everybody's altar is different because everybody has their own version of what they're trying to do and so you know hopefully you're able to you know create something like that so how do you start one well sometimes the easiest way to start an altar is just you know, clearing a space and putting down a little bit of a, a little cloth or something of, of different colors or something that's very significant to you, something that, you know, is part of your family. Or, And if you don't have anything, you create new traditions too. Creating this new tradition of, you know, intimacy with yourself. Because that's what an altar is. An altar is intimacy with self, intimacy with spirit. And when I say spirit, I say, I say great. It's the great spirit. It's, it's the creator. It's God. It's a thing that connects you to the universe is the thing that has a direct line to you. The thing that, that moves you. The thing that, you know, motivates you. The thing that, you know, inspires you. Now, your altar is, is the most beautiful thing you can create. It can be very elaborate and it can be very simple. But either way, regardless, you add things you like. You can add, you know, you can add like sweet grass braids. Oh my God, that smells so good. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know, you can add, you know, these little salt rocks, you know, these little Himalayan rocks. You, just things that are a part of your life. And the best thing that I usually tell people when they create altars is to connect with things that you're already doing. Like, for example, I have the salt room. And this little piece of Himalayan rock, salt rock, is a reminder of, you know, the gift and the beauty that you offer and you bring to the world. And the things that it does and the healing that the salt room does and the healing that the salt does is as much as I have sage in my in my altar, you know, I have a bundle of sage there and, you know, I use it as a reminder. I have candles. I have uh, musical instruments. I use things that just a reminder. My, my pipe is there. The tobacco is there. The things that I use in my in my medicine, the work that I do, it's all there. So your altar is as unique as you want it to be and is as elaborate as you want it to be. And so when you look at the altars, when you look at religious, uh, you know, different do denominations of religion, they all have their different altars in the things that they offer. Some of them, in you know, Christianity, for example, will have the altar where, you know, they have candles and they have Christ or Mary or, or figurines or statues. There's multiple, all types of altars. Even the altars where the priests do their... You know, converting the the bread and the and the wine into the blood and the body of Christ, for example, that's one way too to look at it as well. Yeah. And your altar can have something so very sim uh, very similar to that. You can have something like that as well. You know, you can have crystals, you can have stones, you can have. It, it, it really, it sky's the limit. You know, whatever you want to use, because it has to be it has to be very unique. It has to be something that that draws you and moves you. Something that is that is important to you because here's what happens this is also a place for you to release and let go and connect you know for some of you you've had losses and you've lost your family members or loved ones they're out there and sometimes that's that's a grounding place for you to connect with them and to be with them and not having them all scatter all over the universe and trying to connect with them and so the altar is a great place for you to center a central point a singular point for you to connect with spirit connect even though you're always connected to spirit but this is like a, a intensified place for you to go and feel that energy 
and you know you're there and you pray or you say your affirmations or whatever you feel you're called to say and that's what these places are you know on my altar it's good to be there it's, and it's good to be here you know i have my little bracelets and i have the things that i use you know i try to be as genuine as authentic as i am on this show in life all the time because you have to be because people can read right through you people can tell when you're when you're faking when you're not genuine when you're not you and people can tell when you're not feeling good people can tell when you when you're angry people can tell will they ask you maybe not will they question you maybe not but they know most people usually know they feel they understand so that's why these altars are important i believe altars are important in our lives because Altars are, are movable. Altars can change. You can actually create altars out in, in nature as well. You can go out to nature, create your altars with the trees. You can light candles. You put stones, crystals, you know, whatever. You name it. You can put it there. You know, tobacco. Now, when I do my work, I try to carry tobacco as much as possible. As I teach my students, they carry tobacco with them. Every time they take a stone or something from the river, they give a tobacco offering. If they don't have it, then they give they give a prayer and they give a thanks and they give an acknowledgement of that stone because these things talk to you. Crystals talk to you. You know, for those of you who like crystals, you'll know when a crystal likes you. You'll know when a crystal goes, crystal goes, oh, take me home. You know, I want to go home with you. Or you look at it and you're like, oh my God, I got to just have that. I got to have that crystal. It's just like, it's something calling to me. It's just like, you know, just like my little scrying um, ball here, my little selenite ball. When I'm reading it, when I'm reading the, you know, the, you know, the lines in it to give people readings with it. So it's just like that. And I have my amethyst too. These are things that I pulled off my altar because the amethyst is very powerful for dream time and for things, you know, that, you know, help us for, with our healing, for our mind and for our heart and our spirit and our soul. And that's why I like, I love, I love, I love amethyst. It's just one of my favorite things. And also have a little selenite buffalo, you know, that was carved, someone carved and made. It's really cool. I like it. And so, you know, your your altar is um, is you. It's you. It, it is you. It is it's a reflection of what you're feeling, you know. It's a reflection of what's in your heart and what you want to share with yourself. Because most of these altars are personal altars. It's not necessarily that you're going to show them to anybody. But when you do, you're gonna, you, you can see the story. The story starts to develop. It's like journaling with nature. Journaling with things in life. Instead of writing it down, you have it in your altar. You have it there and you've placed it. And for those of you who are not into that, that's fine. It's not, it's not a big deal. It's not a problem. You're not into it. You're not into it. But this is more for people who are into it. People who want to create altars. I think altars are very magical, very powerful. They're portals. They're things that can move you into directions and feelings and emotions that you probably didn't have. You could be having the most crappiest day and going to your altar, just looking at your altar and giving great gratitude to all the things that are there. Because remember, especially with crystals and rocks now, you know, when you think about crystals and rocks, these, these are things that have been around for millions of years, compressing, you know, things that have been, you know, under the earth and going through a metamorphosis, a change, you know, going through a growth, having a path. And the amazing thing is the journey that that crystal or those rocks has taken just to get to your hands. You know, it had to be mined. It had to be dug. It had to be moved. It had to be shuffled. It had to be, it had to be boxed. It had to be polished. It had to be, you know, sold you know, to the vendors, sold to, you know, the, the wholesaler in, it, in, it, in this journey that it's taken. And so when you feel these crystals, you feel these stones that you have, you feel all that. If you don't feel it, it's because the stone has worked through its cleansing, its personal cleansing. But a lot of stones sometimes don't feel right because they're sad. And you're going, either they're sad? Well, yeah, of course they are. All these things are living pieces and part of Mother Earth. They're all pieces and parts and connections of her. And so when they're dislodged or moved and they're in, moved into places that you're not familiar with, you know, it's like taking you and moving you into in spaces that you're not familiar with 
or moving you out of spaces, moving you out of, you know, places, you feel that too. And when you're going through your transformation. Now, once the stones are, have arrived to wherever they want to be and whoever they've connected with, you know, they, they kind of, I want to say the word chill out. They relax a little bit. You know, they don't have, you know, they don't, they, they start to take on their own owner's energy. They start to take on the purpose that they have for healing, for loving, for beauty, for acknowledgement, and all the things in between. A lot of the crystals you have have been waiting for you as much as you've been waiting for them. These are journeys, you know, that we're all on. We, we you know, this, this rock right here, this stone I have, I don't know. I don't remember where I found it, but I knew that I had to. It had to come with me because it had a purpose, and its purpose is to prop up my sage when it's burning. <laughs> you know, who, who knew? Who knew that was going to be that purpose for the for now? And then the day I transition, the day I move on to the next world, these things will be scattered, or disposed of, or you know pushed away, or given away, or thrown away some things and the process starts again the process begins again and it moves through the cycle how fast how quick well it, we don't know it's kind of irrelevant really it is what it is it's kind of like when the stones that come out of these out of these ground it doesn't really know what its purpose is at that moment except for being in the ground and doing what it does and then it ends up in your hands and then you have a piece of mother nature and you're holding her and she's acknowledging you and you're acknowledging her and you're giving thanks to her. You know, so. And these things hold so much information. Crystals, stones, wood, anything that comes from Mother Earth holds so much information. For some people, they never connect to that level where they don't feel what the stone feels. But there are people that I know personally who could tell me the story, or even imagine the story and create it. Of what this what the purpose was of this stone and how it got there because they feel it because they become one with it you know the journey the journey of the salt this little piece of salt this is just one little nugget and here we are and you know I'm leaving Krista's note there it says as a uh, crystal keeper She's a crystal keeper, but also the stone is a keeper of you, is a keeper. The, the stone, the crystal, is the keeper of the human soul. It protects you and honors you and holds you. The purpose is also the reverse. You may think you're keeping it, but it's also keeping you. It's a joint adventure. It's a joint venture. It gives you, you give it, you can transport it and move it, and it can give you the love back. So you both are working together in unison. You both are working magic. And the magic is sometimes very personal. The magic is very personal between, you know, a person, their crystals, their stones, and their, and their artifacts and things that are in their, on their altar that only they can feel. And no matter how hard you try to share it with somebody else, they may never feel it. And that's okay. Because this isn't about scientific proof. This isn't about trying to prove, well, science... No, this is about a deeper connection. This is a soul connection. This is a spirit connection. This is something that science has no clue how it even works. Or I don't even know if science even cares. But to the person who does care about it, what it means to connect to this stone and what it means to be part of this stone, to be why they have that stone, it's important to them. It's a vital thing. You know, kind of like, I want to just share little things with you. This is part of a, this is a, a conch, a mushroom conch that was growing on the tree and it broke off and I picked it up and then, you know, I painted it. See? Paint different colors of the Inca flag in the Peruvian colors. This, did this, did it know? Maybe. Maybe knew more than I did before I knew. But, you know, it took a journey. And look at the magnificent thing that it became. It, trans it transformed and changed. It's still what it is. It's base core. But it's been loved. It's been connected with. It's been unified with. It's been, you know, 
indoctrinated with the spirit and soul that is my my heart. This is my heart. You know, this is why I got this. This is why when I saw it, I want to share that with you guys because this is my heart. This is my heart. The the colors of all the people. The color of my nation where I was born. This is the color of the prophecy of the condor eagle. You know, this is the the condors and the eagles. You know, the north, the south. If you don't know that story, look it up. And so for me, this is a reminder to keep going, keep moving. There is there are people who are going to listen. There are people who are going to care. There are, going to, there are people who who want to be connected. There are people who want to know who you are. <clears throat> there are as much as there are people who don't care who the heck you are. And they don't really know nothing to do with you. You know? But these these things are on my altar. And, you know, my basement's starting to become my, my altar all, all over the place because I'm running out of room on on my uh, my table. But, you know, this is why I painted this because it's a, it's a remembrance. It's an honoring to remember, you know, how deep our connection is, you know, how deep it is to be part of something, connected to something. And we're all connected. Every human being is connected. That's why we get sad. That's why we get, you know, triggered emotionally, physically, spiritually. When someone says something bad to us or mean to us, it triggers us, doesn't it? Sometimes. And when someone says something nice to us, it triggers us in the opposite direction. In the goodness and kindness. But sometimes people get triggered by that because they didn't really want that. But everybody here... Everybody on the planet is connected. As much as we don't want to be connected, without this planet, we don't exist. We, we can't exist. We can't survive. If this planet blows up tomorrow, I don't care what color, and I don't care how much money you got, it's goodbye for everybody. That's how fragile we are. Human beings are very fragile creatures. We're fragile. Our minds are fragile. Our bodies are fragile. Our bodies are also very strong. And our minds are very strong. When we need them to be. You know. And so. We have to really work together. You know. I'm not saying that we're all going to work together. Because that's not. Gonna, that's that's not. That's not what some people want. That may be what I want. And you guys may want. But there are people who don't want to work together. So. You work together with the people who work want to work to that specific goal because maybe in the meantime by working together and creating your altar of people and friends that you have you also create these new environments the new way of thinking new way of understanding a new way of under uh, uh, appreciating people because it's so easy to discount people because they think differently than us and that happens a lot you know we discount people because they have different kind of thinking different type of feeling, different type of emotion. You may not be the person who can connect to that person. You may not be the person who's able to reach that soul and that spirit to share the message that you want to share. That's why these are fine threads between people. This is why we should always have healthy limits and boundaries and create those and understand that. But we also have to understand that every human being is connected to some other human being. And you're connected to another human being through that person. And that's important. You know, and not only humans, and I'm talking about animals and everything, but, but when I'm talking about the lineage of human humanity, we're all connected. But I don't care if you have a different last name, I don't care if you're black, I don't care if you're Asian, Hispanic, you know, whatever you are. You know, when we take the labels off, we're fragile human beings. We're fragile humans. We cry. We laugh, we sing, we eat, we drink, we go to the bathroom. There's nothing that you don't do that I don't do. We all do similar things, but we all experience life completely different. You can never ask another person to walk in your shoes because, number one, they don't fit. And if they do, they probably don't feel comfortable. Number two, and number three altogether, is who the heck wants to walk in someone else's shoes? The only thing we can do is have empathy. For what another person is going through. When you have empathy. You can understand. When you can be empathetic. And say hey you know what. I can't understand what you're feeling. 
but I know that you're feeling and it's and it hurts you and it doesn't feel good to you so I try to understand the best of my ability what you're feeling because I have different different experience of life I don't have that experience of life so I can never ever be able to experience what you're feeling I can only have an understanding by what you've told me and when you tell me then I can understand but you know in in this in this life sometimes in our fragility we forget that I just want you to understand what I'm I'm trying I'm trying to understand from a vantage point from my programming from my rose-colored glasses from my memories from my experiences what your experience is and what you're feeling all right and it's not always easy and you know there are people who will make it and there are people who won't make it but if you're able to make it just the sheer fact that you're making it may help that person who's having a difficult road a difficult path this is what I really get excited about. It's because sometimes I can't I can't connect to some people because of the blocks I have or or they have blocks about me. But I have other people who connect with me who can connect to them and I see it all the time. And they're able to explain or, or share their experience of me or me of them. And it makes it a little more clear. You know, for a lot of people I come across very very uh, rough and abrasive and very gentle and kind at the same time. Kind of a weird mixture. And because I'm just that way. That's the way God made me. That's the way God made me. You know, just to be on guard, on my toes. And to be a little rough around the edges. You know, I kind of like it that way. You know, just to be, you know, I don't want to be polished stone. I like to be kind of like, you know, this. This is like a good polished stone. I, that's not me. You know, that parts of me are you know polished and smooth like that you know but a lot of me is kind of like this like this amethyst i'm kind of i look kind of look good here from time to time i'm not so good here from time to time and sometimes if you turn me just right i look a lot thinner than i probably am you know but yet either way it's still you know the love and the and the emotions that we put into things and so if i'm like any stone in my bundle I'm like this, this cell in this uh, amethyst crystal, this this little point here. It probably broke off a bigger piece, and you know, but it brings joy to my life. It brings uh, recognition that I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be smooth all around and and sh clean cut shaven and you know, be super fit man. You know, you know, I have my own beauty, and I guess my own beauty is. Like this little piece of crystal. You know? Like that. You know, that's... That's me sometimes. Sometimes I feel like the polished selenite. I feel polished. And all complete and smooth all around. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that sometimes. Very rare. Kind of slippery, I don't like it. <laughs> but I think you get what I'm trying to say. So humanity is right now going through a lot of different things. And you know, I'm just like everybody. I like to challenge humanity too. I like to challenge. And you know, for those of you who know me, I'm kind of one of those people who have a lot of my own theories. You know, have have a lot of my own thoughts about things. Is it conspiracy? I don't know. I'm not conspiring anything. It's just my thoughts. It's the mind of Iggy. You know, Iggy's just thinking about things that probably other people are thinking about and just not willing to talk about. So that's a good example. Sometimes I'll say the things that others would never even think about saying. Or maybe I say too much and others are like, oh my God. You know, because I know that I freak people out. And I know that people appreciate me too on both camps. But, you know, that's kind of how I like being. I like kind of challenging the status quo I like kind of challenging the community I'm not afraid to say you know F you if I don't agree with you you know just because I work in these realms of spirituality and shamanism doesn't mean I have to be a perfect human being it means I just have to do the right things 
and understand the repercussions of what these things mean. I have to be honest with myself. But I will always be genuine to myself. I'll be genuine to people that I care about, people I love. Because you can't do, you can't be other than that. Because you know what? As much as I, I like it and dislike it, you know, I'm kind of in the public eye. People watch me. People see me. And they, 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 they hold me accountable to things. And you know what? And that's fine. But I also have to correct people sometimes. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a human being. I'm a human being too. You know, I'm a human being who has faults. I'm a human being who makes mistakes. I'm a human being who may not see things the way you think I see them. And that's the key word. How you think I see them. You know, I see the world very abstractly, very differently. But also see it very conservatively and very moderately. <laughs> All these different versions of, of myself and how I see the world. And so, if I don't agree with you, don't get mad at me. You know, but I'll give you your voice. If I agree or disagree, that doesn't mean we won't be friends. It just means we, at that, on that juncture of things, we don't agree. We, we don't come to an understanding, or maybe we came to an understanding. Because I love you that much, and I care about you that much. Not to change you, because my goal is not to change you. My goal is to experience you how you are as a human being and take the good, the bad, and the ugly with it and then decide if that's the path I want to ride with. If I really want to keep continue down that road with someone. But so many people just hang on. So many people just try to fix people. So many people try to change people. And then they get frustrated. And then they wonder why this person doesn't change. And they don't understand why they don't like. It's because you're not being authentic to yourself. You're not being honest with you. Be authentic with you. Be honest with yourself. Love yourself. Love who you are, how you are, and understand that you're growing. And you're going to be growing to the day you die. This doesn't, you don't come to a place and you go, oh, I made it. Look how I grew. I'm here. <clears throat> no, you're always moving. You're always adapting. You're always evolving. You're different five minutes ago from where you are now. You're going to be different tomorrow. Some of your thinking is going to be the same. But you're going to be older. You're going to have been replaced cells. You're going to have different feelings, emotions about stuff. You're going to change your mind. You're going to fall in love. You're going to fall out of love. You're going to get angry. You're going to get mad. You're going to ride the whole emotion. You're going to ride the whole gamut. But you know what? We're fortunate enough. To understand this, people who work in these realms, people who are uh, trying to uh, better themselves and self-development and creating new versions of themselves. Because there are a lot of people out there who don't believe that and don't have never been told, who have not been loved, or the love that they received was very unauthentic or very damaging or very abusive. And so they're walking around this world abusing other people because that's the way... They learned what love is to share their love in their heart. So when they meet people like you or me, and we seem we seem kind of weird to them, probably because we are. I'm the weirdest guy I know. But either way, but when we meet people who look different, smell different, act different, you know, taste different, eat different, and they see the world in a, in, in a very blissful, joyful way, you know, you affect the world. Your actions, what you say, what you do affects the world around you. And when that world affects the world around you, it affects the world outside of you. And then keeps going, exponentially growing outwardly. And next thing you know, it all comes back, full circle. And it does the 180. Sometimes it does 360, it comes come right back at you. But sometimes it's 180 and it changes and moves that way. So, if you don't think you're changing the world, I have something to tell you. Every day you're changing the world. And the world's changing. When you're absent, the world feels your absence. When you're present, your world feels your presence. You know, you're, you're as much as part of the worldly altar of the pieces and parts that are important to the world. Don't think that you're not. It's good to be here. 
And when I say that, I mean that. You know, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. And if you say it loud enough, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. It just feels better every time you say it. Say it with me. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. <sighs> you know, you feel very empowered. Even when you don't feel like saying it, it's probably when you need to say it the most. It's good to be here. It's giving thanks and giving gratitude for everything that has changed me, challenged me, helped me, hurt me, loved me. It's good to be here. You know, that's the magic. And in the, in the world is challenging, yes. The world is challenging because the world has been taught to be challenging. You know? The world's only crippled because enough people believed it was crippled. You know? A lot of people believe that there's problems. And there are problems. And a lot of people believe that there's beautiful good things happening. Then good things happen. Monitor your own speaking. I monitor sometimes. Sometimes I catch myself going, well, geez. Well, no wonder I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. Because listen to what I'm saying. Look at the, what I'm spewing out of my mouth. I'm just as guilty as the next person. What you speak. It's a spell. It's spell casting. I'm spell casting. I'm talking right now as I speak. I'm sharing these thoughts, yes. But it's important to remember what we say is a prayer. So, you know, when we when we say the I am, the affirmation is the I am affirmation. You know, the altar of self. I am worthy. I am loving. I am beautiful. I'm going to tell you on my phone. You know, I'm going to share with you guys. Because I don't want anybody to ever think that I don't do what I say. Because it's not true. Okay. When my phone locks, this is what I see. All right. I am happy. I am healthy, wealthy. You know, all those affirmations. I am positive. I am blessed. I am grateful. I am beautiful. I am confident. I am courageous. I am happy. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I'm secure. I'm worthy. I'm positive. I'm blessed. I'm grateful. I'm beautiful. I'm confident. I'm courageous. There's more, but it just didn't fit. You see that enough in your subconscious mind. Your super subconscious mind picks that up. You can't help but feel those things. You can't help to go into that direction. Where better place to have that, I thought, than on my phone when it locks up on me. When it locks, you know? Because we're manifesting, we're creating. That's right. That's correct. Those positive affirmations for self. Because when we become positive, when we become, when our self and our spirit and our soul is in alignment, then other people get in alignment because they want to be around you. They want to be with you. You know, do you ever wonder why people want to be around certain people and hang out with certain people? Because sometimes they look like they have a great life and it looks like their life is like in this really cool place, right? It's not so much that their life's in a great place, but it's more about how their attitude about life is. You know? You know, when, when we drum, I sing, I dance, I do the healing work, and I chant, I do the ikaros, the songs. Spirit calls those to me. And you know, the right people show up at the drum circles. There are people who don't like those those things. But, you know, it doesn't, it's not a, it's not about if you like or dislike. When you're called to spirit, you do things a certain way. And the right people will show. The right people will come. You know, it's like not everybody wants to buy the same car, right? Everybody like some people like Jeep. And some people like Dodge or Fords, right? That's just who they are. doesn't make them bad or wrong, right or wrong. It's just who they are. Drum circles the same way. But when people want to hang out with you, you know, look at your circle of friends right now. 
there should be five people you can count off right now who are just very influential in your life. If you don't have them, that's good too, because you know what? That means you're comfortable enough to be yourself, that you're in a good place at yourself, that you don't have to be around people all the time to make yourself feel better or make other people feel better. But if you have five good friends, five people that you can call right now and say, hey, I need help. And you know when you're bottom of your heart, if you call them, they would be there in a heartbeat. Most of us have that. I have that. And that happens. If you don't have that, if you have two or three, that's sufficient. If you have one, great. But you are the company that you keep, believe it or not. If you're around stinking thinking, you're going to get a lot of stinking thinking. You can't help but it rub off on you. You know, when, when people were, you know, Eeyore mentalities, that stuff rubs off. Trust me, it does. If you're Eeyore, it rubs off. Because I become Eeyore sometimes. And I become emo, you know. God, I'm so down. You know? It happens to the best of us, man. It's This is just life. And I'm laughing here because, you know, I don't want to be positive all the time. You know, I, I, I want to be happy. I want to be acknowledged. And sometimes I just want to be left alone. Believe it or not, I'm the most... I love my alone time. Like when I'm by myself, I really enjoy being by myself. I get a kick out of hanging out with me because I get to do what I want to do. <laughs> you know, with me, we get to do what we want to do. Then we don't have to do all these other things other people want to do. But when you have friends and when you have relations with other people and you have people in your lives, it's not really compromising. It's, it's coming to a place of love and understanding that all of you have to share in different moments so we can all learn from one another. It's so easy to just uh, want to be the lead, you know, and always be that way. But but I'm really excited. You know, I'm really excited about, you know, how humanity is moving in the, in the direction it's moving. Because right now, we have a great opportunity to make this world the most amazing thing that has been in a long time. We have the most technological advancements in our lifetime than any lifetime has had that I'm aware of. Okay, let's just put it that I'm aware of. Okay? Because right now, we have, you know, things that we can do that can make people feel better or make people, you know, uh, save people's lives. You know, the only reason, I hate to say this, but probably the only reason why a lot of us are, are alive today is because of the technology, you know, the advancement in medicine. You know, honestly, if we didn't have that advancement, you know, if we didn't have those advancements, we a lot of us probably wouldn't be here today. I know I wouldn't be here today. I was born twice. You know, I had my shaman journey as an unborn child. When my mom had her appendicitis, you know, they had to pull her, pull me out, put me in a solution, let me sit there. And there was no guarantee that I would live. And then they put me back in. And then only, f I still had four months to, you know, incubate. And, you know, I stapled her up, swole up. There was no guarantee that Iggy Garcia would survive. But, you know, well, I'm here, so I obviously survived. There is a mission that I had to do, and it's still evolving every day. But to be born two times like that, to see light twice, to go and see the light and then come out and be put back in the darkness of the womb, that's an interesting thing. That's a very powerful uh, journey that I have to share with you guys another time. Because we just don't have time on this show right now. But but our personal altars, our, our hearts, our spirit. Remember, we're, we're a walking altar. We're a representation of who we are and what we want people to see. Or, we want, or what we hope people see. And I think a lot of it has to do is hope that people see who we are. For who we are and what we do and what we share the world. You know? And so... You know, when I, when I come on these shows, I come on here to share. And I also come on here to learn because I read your, your comments more than you think. Not with this new platform they have on, on the live feed. It's easier for me to read what people are posting. 
you know, it's it's beautiful. You know, life is beautiful. And you know why people get sad about the end? It's because they didn't do a lot of things that they wish they had done. And if you do the things that you think that you've done, you've accomplished, you'd never be enough, probably. Then you can transition and leave with in peace. And some people don't leave that way. I know on the path that I'm on right now, as a human being, in the skin of a shaman, in the skin of a native, in the skin of a European, in the skin of the mixed blood, you know, in the skin that's assigned to me, the body that's assigned to me, the mind that's assigned to me from God, from spirit, from the universe, from the infinite. This is the facility. This is the tool that I use. I, that I have to use to my best of my ability. And sometimes it gets tired. Sometimes it gets ravaged. And then sometimes it feels great. When you find the pieces and the parts that you can fix. The pieces and the parts to get better. You know, and sometimes we get confused that living life to its fullest means we have to go off and do all these crazy things. That's part of it, but for some of us and others and for myself, maybe, but living life to your fullest means is appreciating the little things that are in front of us, the people that are in front of us, the little things that you notice because you do the work, but when you didn't do the work, you didn't notice them because you just thought it was just part of life. No, they're gifts. Every encounter with another human being is a gift. Negative or positive. Those encounters are amazing. You may not see them in that moment. You may not see that in that moment. But when you see them. You're aware of them. When someone's pissed off. And someone's mad. You can tell. And you have an opportunity to speak or not speak. And share with somebody in that moment. What you've learned. Without embarrassing them. Without making them feel belittled. Or small. Because so many people get upset when somebody else is upset. We have an opportunity to say, you know, I see you. I acknowledge you. Not that I've been there. But more of like, you got this. You know, you, you got this. It's no problem. I've had s situations where I should have been totally mad and upset about things. But, you know, now it's like, it's different now. It's different because I understand because I was there. I was that person. I'm still that person. They're, they're just me. There's another version of me having the experience that I already had. And I get to look back and smile. You ever see that person who just smiles and you're just like totally mad? And you're like... Nah, 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 and you're just going... And you're not trying to be an ass. But you're just going, wow. I know what that feels like. I'm not going to tell them that. But I know what I know what that is. I don't have to feel that because I know what that feels like. It doesn't feel good, but you know what? You'll be okay. And sometimes the unspoken word is more powerful than the spoken word. You know? Sometimes we can talk too much. And sometimes we can say too little. But I know sometimes a beautiful smile, a beautiful heart, and the genuineness in your spirit. People see that and they can't help but shift. They can't help but have a metamorphosis in that moment. Even if it was just for that moment. You know, maybe their intention was to piss the next person off. But you know what? And they didn't piss you off. And they're probably going, wow, what's with that guy, that girl? There's nothing. They were there to teach you. They're there to teach you as they are there to teach you. The lessons are always being learned. We're always teaching. So you're a reflection of your altar. You are your walking altar. You're a reflection of what you s represent to yourself and what you give out to the world. Because the world watches you as much as you watch it. All right, guys. I want to say peace and love. I hope you guys make it to the salt. Salt Spa, Serenity Salt Spa sponsored our show tonight. So if you go to the website, Serenity Salt 
Ticketmaster.com and you set up an appointment time and you type in the code Iggy, you get a surprise. So if you want to see the surprise, type it in. You'll see what it is. All right, guys, I love you very much. I really appreciate your time. Just be the best version of yourself in that moment. Do what you can do. And the only way you can change the world is by changing yourself. Being it's good to be here. Oho, matakuyasin. And I will see everybody whenever I come back on my show. Because it's my show. So I can do it whenever I want. No timetable. And with that, I want to see you guys next time, next place. Come to the drum circles that are coming up. I got a, a sound bath next Wednesday at Griggs Reservoir at 7 p.m. Then a drum circle Saturday uh, at Griggs. And then the following, I have a drumming in Delaware. And then I have the bottom of the month, I have one in Schiller Park. Be the magic. Be the change you want to see in the world. Because that's the only way the world changes if you are making the changes in yourself. Peace and love, guys. Take care. And I will see everybody tomorrow. I will see everybody today. I will see everybody next week. I will see you when I see you. Be well. Take care. Idrisikwi. Oho. Matakuyasin. Peace and love.